Our speaker this morning is Grant Deshishku. Grant is a two-year boarding student from Kensington, Maryland. He's a prefect in Wendell and the unofficial captain of Hill Throwers. He's also the proud roommate of Eric Totoro. Grant. Good morning. I have been described as many things in my life, but one descriptive term I would like to speak about today is one that defined me for many years, a bully. I was a bully, plain and simple. I would never hurt people physically, but rather mentally with my words. In an effort to preemptively discard the fallacy that I am some high and mighty individual who is up here to scold my peers about the negative effects of bullying, I would like to share two experiences in which I was the bully. However, before diving into my actions and how they affected those around me, I would like to speak to the reality that my actions, of which I take full responsibility for, were partially a reaction to the way society tells young men and boys to carry themselves. Men are told from a young age that there are boy things and there are girl things. For example, I'd like to run an experiment. Please raise your hand if both of the following apply to you. Your assigned sex at birth was male, and at some point between your birth and now, your favorite color was or is blue. Thank you. More than a few hands went up. While societal pressure of one's favorite color is not of much, if any, detriment to one's psyche, the reaction to young men and boys sharing emotion is. We are told that crying is for sissies or that we need to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and be a man. But what does it mean to be a man? For a long time, I struggled with this. I thought being a man meant that my feelings were invalid and that I needed to put them aside in order to take care of those around me, a burden that many others share. It was this mentality of pushing my feelings down into a little box inside of my soul that made me a toxic individual. I cared so deeply about my image and the idea that I was impenetrable and no one's words could hurt me. However, what others said did hurt me a lot. I, like everyone here, have had my fair share of teasing inflicted upon me. It wasn't easy as a fourth grader leaving for Thanksgiving break normal and returning with a big ugly scar running down my forehead, even though it's pretty cool now. or being chubby when all of my friends were not. As a young man, I dealt with my feelings by eating them away. As when I ate, it allowed me to focus solely on that and not the realities of life. This and many other toxic coping mechanisms only make one's view of themselves worse. And I hated myself. And in this deep hatred for myself, I inflicted pain onto others. The first instance that I would like to share with you all today happened in middle school. I moved to the street where I live to this day in fourth grade. When taking moving boxes from the car to the house, I met a boy named Jake. He and I immediately became the best of friends. We walked to and from school together and would spend our time in the afternoon playing or getting into more trouble than my mother would have liked. This was a friendship that I took for granted. One night, Jake and I played Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare for hours. That next morning, we walked to the bus and reminisced on our fun from the night before. Everything was fine. The same cannot be said for our walk home. When walking back to, the street, to our street, a girl in our class who also happened to live on our street accompanied us. Jake brought up our fun from the night before and I simply ignored him. I gave no response. Puzzled, he said a sentence again. Still, no response. Finally, he stopped all three of us and said it again. I responded with something along the lines of, leave me alone, I don't play those baby games like you do which my roommate can attest to the falsehood of that statement, considering my long nights of Lego Star Wars and goofy golf with the boys. Regardless, there are two ways to make people like you. One way is that you can better yourself, and by doing so, make yourself somebody people want to be around. Or you can take the seemingly easy route and put others down around you so that someone will perceive you to have elevated yourself. I chose the latter. Jake stormed off, and I finished my walk home. I played a role all too familiar to many people in this chapel. I was the pick me individual. It took Jake and I about a year to reconcile completely after, as this caused us to briefly drift apart and find new friends. I know that he will watch the recording of this talk. So Jake, 
I'm sorry. But let me say this. I couldn't tell you a but I can recall hundreds of times where Jake has been there for me when I needed him. My healthy relationships with the respect that they deserve and to own my actions, regardless of how embarrassed. Around the same time, when all my teenage angst was building up, pressing vigorously against that box in my I hurt another person, my brother. My brother Bennett is two years and one day older than me, but in some ways, I am the older brother. You see, Bennett has pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, or PDD-NOS. For Bennett, who is very high functioning, this generally means that he was delayed from birth. His speech was delayed, his physical development was delayed, and that resulted in him being socially awkward. While today, if you look at him, you might see a guy who's just like anyone else, seeming to blend perfectly into society. In the past, however, this description is not one anyone would use to describe him. When we were growing up, Bennett had trouble making friends. He was very socially awkward and found it difficult to accurately read the room. Sometimes he would say the wrong thing, make the joke at the wrong time, etc. To some, this may be off-putting. In middle school, which we attended together, people in his grade asked me, what's wrong with your brother? Or are you guys really related? I wish I could stand here and say that I stood up for him, but I didn't. In fact, I did the opposite. I wanted the eighth graders who were naturally much cooler than I was to like me. I attempted to achieve this by bullying my own brother, talking about him behind his back to get his classmates approval. And it wasn't until fairly recently that I realized the effects of my actions. My, bro my mother told me a story of the time she went to our school's equivalent of Parents' Day, like we have here at the Hill. She said that she walked into the cafeteria to see Bennett sitting completely alone at his own lunch table. She sat down with him and asked him why he was sitting alone. He responded, I do this every day. My actions, my inability to deal with my own insecurities and negative feelings towards myself resulted in my brother being ostracized. The way I spoke about him, saying that he was weird or that he wasn't all there, hurt him. And for that, Bennett, I am sorry. I've been trying my best to forgive myself for this because I can't stop asking myself, who bullies a kid on the autism spectrum? How could I be so awful that I would put down my own brother, my flesh and blood, so that others would like me? I can't recall the last time I spoke to any of those eighth graders, but I speak to Bennett as often as I can. Nobody can lift me up when I'm down, make me laugh as hard, or even sometimes make me as angry as he does. It is from this experience that I've learned another aspect of being a man, protecting your family and others close to you. Having learned this lesson the hard way, I am extremely defensive of my family, especially my brother and two sisters who have helped shape me into the man I am today. While nobody in this chapel has experienced these examples exactly as they occurred, I bet everyone can see parallels between my experiences and their own. Everyone has been bullied and everyone has bullied. We haven't been there for a friend when they needed us. We haven't spoken up when someone was talking about someone else who wasn't there. We are all responsible for the bully culture that exists within society. And it is our job to fight this culture and hold ourselves up to a higher standard. We like to call this institution the family boarding school but that claim means nothing if we do not treat each other like family. Nobody, not a single person here, is too cool to care or to think about someone else and their feelings rather than themselves and their own. Additionally, it is our job as the young influential portion of society to break down the gender barriers that confine us to blanket terms and definitions. As a man, should I hold in my thoughts and feelings, show a tough exterior but be broken inside? No. My gender does not define my character. I can like whatever I like and I can do whatever I want. I shouldn't be confined to boxes based on whether or not I was born with one or two X chromosomes. Anyone can step up and be a man and not just men. It's an arbitrary concept. In my opinion, to be a man is to stand up for others and for what you believe is right, 
regardless of whether it might be awkward or, make, or not make you the most liked person in the room. Anyone can do that. I have, found that try, I have found that trying to make myself a better person, a person that people want to be around, has made my life better. Not everyone likes me. I'm certain someone sitting here right now doesn't like me, and that's okay. By being my authentic self, I have been able to find the right people for me. My friends, my mentors, my partner. I hope that if anyone walks away with anything from this talk, is that the only thing that matters is how you take care of yourself and the healthy relationships in your life. No grade, no musical, and no game is as important as your healthy relationships. I am Grant Ashishku. I am an Albanian American. I am a brother, a son, a friend. These are all some things that define me, but my sex is not. My goal is not to be the best man I can be. My goal is to be the best Grant I can be. So please be the best version of yourself you can be and be patient. Your people will find you. Thank you.